we do have some news. This actually has been a pretty sizable news day. And I didn't know what to make of this when the news first broke, Greg. But we've gotten some more information, and I'll just I'll just blurt it out. Uh, Joe LaCava is now on the bag of one Patrick Cantlay for the, quote, foreseeable future, which indicates that Tiger and Joe have split. Apparently, this is with Tiger's blessing, and they are starting effective immediately. Uh, Joe LaCava is there at Quail Hollow on Patrick Antley's bag right now. Hey, those two have worked together before in the past. I'm not sure this makes a huge difference in Patrick Cantlay's game. You know, I, I expect good things just like we've been getting out of Patrick Cantlay as far as his play is concerned. Um, but the, the real story in this is the, the tiger angle on things, in my opinion. Uh, and you know, what, what first came into my mind was after tiger won the masters, uh, going through his back fusions and all of that, I believe this is around that time frame when he mentioned that Joe stuck with him and, and Tiger said, Hey, if you want to work, go, you know, go take a, go take a bag. He's certainly um, in high demand. And, and Joe decided to stay with Tiger. Um, and, and now we're seeing this different side where he is moving on and it takes away a little bit of the hope for me with Tiger. Um, and ultimately I think that's the biggest angle uh, of this story, right? What Tiger's future looks a lot more bleak. And I think we all knew that. Um, but this is just kind of an, an additional sign of evidence like we needed one. Yeah, that is that is interesting, Patrick, because as Greg mentions, uh, Joe LaCava sat around and waited a lot on Tiger's bag and hasn't hasn't picked up other looping duties. Uh, no longer will he wait. And, and Patrick Cantlay is a pretty good bag to uh, attach yourself to. Yeah, I think Tiger's only played five times since the November Masters. Uh, two of those obviously were WDs. And during that time, he was with Cantley once for the Northern Trust. And then he was actually with uh, Steve Stricker at the Zurich Classic, oddly enough. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're looking to pick up someone's bag, Patrick Cantley is a good one. Some would argue he is the bag man of the PGA Tour. He wins a lot of, you know, big money events to an extent. Uh, tour Championship, a couple FedEx Cup playoff events. Uh, so it's, it's a good uh, good name to attach yourself with. And Cantley is number four in the world at the moment so we've should, kind of seen go ahead should we call joe lacava the apprentice since it's a dewalt bag <laughs> such a bad bag yes that's good though <laughs> i like that um but it's kind of just this continuation of these longtime caddies going to to younger players uh and that kind of that's kind of just the natural flow of, of the pga tour i think it's always a tell rick when veteran caddies that are on interesting bag. I, I don't even want to say like good bag. I don't know if Tiger's a good bag, right? I mean, he's like the best bag in some ways and in other ways, he's just super inconsistent in terms of how much he plays, but it's such a tell when guys like that, Lee, I think about bones going to JT and you're like, Oh, like those guys know who the best players are. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and, and it seems like, yeah, of course, like Patrick Cantlay is number four in the world, but um, th there's something about like, I, I don't know that, you know, I'm trying to think of somebody that's been number four in the world. Like Alex Noren was number seven in the world at one point. It's not like Joe Acaba is leaving Tiger for Alex Noren's bag. No offense to Alex Noren, right? Like the, the caddies leaving older players good bags for younger players better bags like it's always a tell as to who the best who the actual best players in the world are yeah, yeah. it's it's kind of like when a bill comes across a senator's desk and then you see them buying up stock or something it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty similar to that i think wow that that's quite an analogy to not see that coming good insider trading uh analogy there the my favorite comment currently in the chat is from Matt Vice says, Joe is so good at waiting. He's a perfect fit for Patrick Cantlay. But I'm bumped. Get it? Yeah. Uh, I do wonder, and I believe, uh, I believe, Greg, to put a bow on this, I believe this was Patrick reaching out to Joey LaCava. So I don't know if something happened between uh, him and longtime bagman uh, Matt Minister or if – just looking for a change, a different voice, heard rumblings that Joe was becoming available. I always would love to know the inner workings of these types of deals. And I'm not sure we ever will. 
Right. I mean, that was a, a really good partnership for a long time. And, you know, like Kyle just pointed out, you, you, these guys know who the best bags in the world are. Uh, so if, if you're Matt Minister, what, what's next? Um, and, and it kind of leads you to think that this was a decision on Patrick Cantlay's behalf because it'd be really hard to leave Patrick Cantlay. Yeah. You're not getting a Scotty Scheffler bag or a John Rom bag or Rory. You're not getting any of those bags. Uh, it would be very odd to go to a Xander Shoffley's bag uh, from Patrick Cantlay. I don't think that would happen. So it, it's a it, you know a unique situation, and it seems like Patrick Cantlay is the one. Just l- without any information, it looks like Patrick Cantlay is looking for a new voice. Um, you know, looking for something different. And there are a lot of reasons why that could be. Um, you know, it could be a schedule thing, although that's kind of unlikely. Uh, uh, so I, I, you know, I'm not really sure what happened there. And I think it'd be unfair to try to guess. Um, but ultimately uh, the one guess that I would make is you're not leaving Patrick Cantlay's bag unless you're going to leave caddying altogether. Um, which I, I suppose is possible, but, but there are few and far between that are better than Patrick Cantlay. Um, so yeah, it's a, unique situation. And again, I, I'm not really expecting a big, I, I don't look at this like a Ted Scott going to Scotty Scheffler or a bones going to JT. I, I don't look at this as a big monumental change for Patrick Cantlay. I, I think we're going to see some pretty similar play out of him. Um, Cause look, Matt minister is a great caddy too. He, he really is. Um, and and I, so I'm not sure what kind of tangible difference it is, but that will be, that will be seen. Go around the room. If you had to pick a bag for the I next, like the if, same thing. if you had a caddy for the next five years of your life, like you quit making content, you quit listening to people in idiotic bucket hats talk about golf on YouTube, who who would you choose to caddy for? So there's a lot of things to take into account, right? There's yeah. money, obviously. There's, you spent a lot of time with this person. There's success. There's just a, there's a, there's a bunch there. So I'm curious about who you guys would pick. I was looking through just like the world rankings here. Uh, I want someone now. I, I understand I am not a professional caddy, so I will probably not be very good at this, which by the way, there should be same caddy power rankings, right? Like mm. I, like I'm always like, Oh, he's probably a good caddy. Like I have no idea. I don't that, know what really look at that grass toss. Oh. Yeah. I don't even really know what makes <laughs> caddy. but I assume I I need a I need a pretty low key guy. I can't John Rom would eat me alive. I understand that. John Rom would just shred me. I think I would go uh or at least one of my top options would be Tony Fino. Mm. I, I think he'd be laid back. I think we're going to make a lot of money. It'd be cool watching him hit the shots and he and like he doesn't want to spend time with me after the round. He's got family to I can go do whatever I want. It's a good one. <laughs> That's a that's a uh, that's a really good one. It is. That's going to be tough to top. If you find some single guy who wants to go to dinner with you every night and like, oh god, no. <laughs> I'm not talking about. Can that's you so imagine? Needy. Can, can you imagine caddying for like JT? No, it would be horrible. Oh my god! And he's like, oh, I think if we hit this like spinny fade like you know 190 but maybe i could hit a high draw like 192 instead and it ended up in your like, dog i don't know i just hit the shot <laughs> all right what else we got greg uh so i have a little bit of a different t- i want to be involved to a degree Ooh. right i want to ha- help wow. out so he wants to be the star of the show he, he so i wouldn't dinner. mind He's great. i don't necessarily want to be the star of the show um <laughs> of course the caddy's never the star of the show but you want to have uh, an influence and i think that would be i think that's one of the coolest things in caddying is feeling a little bit of the heat my you know my guy is involved in this thing and you know he's asking for my advice and uh, opinion and asking for my help so you're you're not going to believe this, and I may get laughed out of the out of the Zoom here, but uh, it, to me, it's Jordan Spieth. Oh my god! Look, I love this for a Are couple you reasons. Sick. One, well, maybe. Are you a masochist? I think there's uh, Michael Greller gets a lot of opportunity to help, 
Uh, there's <laughs> that's, a, that's one way to put it. Yeah. There's a banter back and forth, but it's very rarely negative, right? It's uh, uh, surprising sometimes. How did that go left? But, but Jordan doesn't blame Greller for anything, which I really like. And he's a big part of it. He's a big part of it. Now, there was one instance I remember where he kind of gave Michael a hard time. You had me, you had, me, you had me in the water and you had me over the green there, Michael. Yes. Pebble Beach. Right. 2019. Right. Now, have you number seen eight. Just, Okay, Michael Greller has aged like the president of the United States. Are you yes. sure you want to be involved in this? I don't fi- I I find it to be uh, so engaging. I don't find it to be uh well, maybe it is. Well, well, okay. But okay, I, so I feel I, alive. Yeah, well, <laughs> you would you would something. you would feel something. Uh what's the difference between Cant- or between uh Justin Thomas and Speeth, right? You said you didn't well, I don't know if you said you didn't want JT, but No, I I think I just like Jordan's personality a little more. I think okay. he's a little night like you know, a little nicer. It feels a little more lighthearted, a little more uh natural and while i do think he complicates things i i think that he could simplify in a way and while there's a lot of questions there's some confirmation uh and i i think there's an opportunity for a caddy to really help simplify things for someone like jordan speak uh and then you also have this ability level that's extremely high from very bizarre and unique situations And, and i think that really helps when you get into trouble there's a opportunity to still find success jt can do that too um and jt would be i'd be fine with jt i think all those you know we'll, we have all these different shots hey this is this is the shot there's a opportunity to make a big difference and really help jt in my opinion um not that bones isn't doing that or can't do that but um but i i think that both of those guys give a lot of they they put a lot on their caddy, which I would like to be a part of if I'm if I'm doing it for five years. And again, this is five years. Right? Yeah, I'm five not years. Age that much in five years. <laughs> Don't Thank speak you, too Patrick. soon, <laughs> Patrick. Patrick, who you got? Uh, my answer is pretty simple. It's Colin Morikawa. I am horrible at reading greens. If he misses putts, dude, it's just your stroke. That that has nothing to do with my green reading ability. Mm. If he's flagging it every time. Easy peasy. He, he can win the big events. He's already in the big events. Give me more Kawa. Okay. So I'll, I'll finish this off here. <clears throat> I think. So if you want just pure money, you might pick like Sung Jay. You'd be working like 50 weeks a year. And you got to convert to meters. <laughs> and the, I, like, he doesn't speak great English. I would struggle with. Many, many. The meters thing would be a, were a real problem. Uh, I think my answer. So two two things that are that are. I mean, I think that I'm surprised nobody's picked this guy because he hits three of the things that I want the most, which is oh. a good job, healthy salary. So that's one. Two is I want to be in it at majors. Like I want to be in. I want to. I want what that feels like. And then three would be. I want to play in a bunch of team events. Oh. And so I think I, I think I go Scotty Shuffler. Oh, uh, I thought you were going to say Xander for some I reason. thought you were going to say Max Homo, which is probably one of the better bags. <clears throat> yeah. Homo would be Homo's good, but, but he, but Shuffler's obviously been more competitive in major championships. So I, I think, I think I'd go Scotty Shuffler. I, we have a good, uh, we, I mean, we would have a good rapport. Uh, we'd have, we'd have I mean, both Dallas guys, plenty to talk about. Um, you know, I, so. I could, I could, okay. Uh, that, that, <laughs> I think I'd come around to Sung Jay's back if I could convert to meters. He gets, his, I, like, his, I like how you say convert to meters like it's a religion or something. <laughs> his, his daddy speaks yeah. to him in English and he definitely like would not small talk me otherwise. Like, we, I wouldn't have to, talk, like, you know what I mean? Like, that I could, I could do that. I could do a Sung Jay back. You don't want you. You're going around for five years. You don't want small talk. You just want to be. It's a business. This is a business decision. Yeah. I, business. Damn. No, I'm I'm with Rick. Like I, I think Shuffler is like a good mix though. He he, 
he we would we could chat, but I I don't think he just like talks to. He's not like it's not like being on Horschel's bag, right? Oh my gosh, that's like going but, to yeah, Guantanamo. Right. It's like what? What is it? <laughs> Nothing. Um, <laughs> but but I'm with I'm I'm in Greg's camp. I, I want to be friends with this guy. Um, so I think so was too. like my age. Got, so. That's because you guys are young. But, Once, see, 30, I don't need any more friends. Look, it, it's fine <laughs> to have friends at work. Work friends are different than, hey, let's go to dinner every night. I agree with you on the, like, when we're clocked out for the day, let's let's call it. I mean, uh, you go eat wherever you eat. I'll go where I go. We'll right. go hang out, do our own thing. But to be able to talk while you're playing, warming up, getting ready, you want to have a good a nice rapport you want to have conversations N- nothing to be uncomfortable i did this uh sort of like video shoot with uh jt and um <clears throat> jimmy johnson one time this was after uh, uh, the nascar guy no his old no. caddy <laughs> no his old caddy <laughs> oh you know what then the second one i was thinking was the guy who used to play for the cowboy or used to <laughs> oh my god <laughs> right. daryl johnson no, no the dude, coach jimmy johnson. Yeah. oh jimmy oh uh, okay yeah yeah I, I, that, was, that was the third or fourth Jimmy Johnson I would have gotten to. Really- uh, well, anyway, his old caddy and one of the I was facilitating basically the the it was like a caddy player relationship conversation for some video deal, and uh, one of the questions that they wanted to be like the the brand wanted to be asked was, what's your what's your relationship like? Like, how does your relationship off the course translate to on the course? And they were both like, "What? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what is, what is, what does this mean? Like, because I think that I, and not all player caddy relationships are like that. Some of them do hang out all the time, but I, I do think it's a little bit of like, I, do I want to go like hang out with my boss when I'm on a work trip? All you know for, and I've already been with him working all day. I don't know. Like that's just not a." common thing in like the work world but for some reason we see sports as as different i guess i don't know yeah i mean you're talking about hanging out with stars right which which is i could see people being well yeah i'd love to hang out with x player would you though but no you it would get old really fast i agree 